say, hey, LaShawn, how you are? How are you? Welcome to Sunday School, beautiful. Um, I'm so glad that y'all are here. But it was just this. I just thank God this morning that I was reminded of the call and uh, knowing that the 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 uh, the licensure, the certifications, and all of those things they don't make me or any of us who we are. It is the call that's been placed on our lives. God called me from the foundations of the world. He knew me and knew who I would be. And so I'm excited even the more on this morning going into this lesson. I have enjoyed this lesson because it talks about one part of the Christmas story that um, we really should put thought into. And it really is going to talk about the people we call the three kings. And just so we know, we are not there. There's really no evidence that says that they were kings. Um, these are things that, uh, you know, sometimes stories take a life of their own and we just follow it. Even like the whole nativity scene, when you see the three kings at the, the manger and biblically that can't be possible because the shepherds they found him in a manger but when the three king or the 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 three wise men is really who they were the three wise men when they found the the child he was already a a, a child he was about two years old and so it's really you know it's important to us to study and to get to understand and know and rightfully divide god's word i love it and that's the beauty of being able to teach um, and to help us someone because someone laid out lessons for me to go and study and and read upon in the Bible. If we, you know, follow the scripture, the scripture tells us. Amen. So the today's Sunday school lesson is titled a regal response to holy light. Ah, that that title alone is just more than enough. A regal response to holy light light. So uh, let me just go on into prayer so we can get into this great uh, Sunday school lesson, which is our, it, it uh, leads us into this holiday season. Amen. And before I, I forget, let me just wish you all a merry, merry, joyous, blessed Christmas. Amen. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, first, I just give your name praise. I give you glory. You are Emmanuel. You are with us. And I love you for that. I love you so much for being with us. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful, beautiful December day, Lord God, December the 20th year 2020 there's a significance about today in the numbers of the day lord god and and so god i just thank you for this beautiful day lord i i thank you lord for life for health and for strength lord god i thank you that even in these tumultuous times you've kept us safe lord god from hurt harm and from all dangers lord even when the enemy would desire to sift us like wheat you oh god you said, just like for Peter, you prayed for us. Lord, I thank you that if nobody ever says a word of prayer, my God, I thank you, Lord, that you have already prayed for me, God. Thank you for that. And so, Lord, I decrease so that you, through the Holy Spirit, will increase and teach your lesson on this morning. Teach us today, Lord of God, Lord God, about a regal response to your holy light. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that y'all are here this morning. Hey, hey, um, uh, who is that I'm looking at? Oh, Patrice. Let me put on my real glasses so I can see y'all. It's one thing to be cute, but it's a whole other one to be able to see. Amen. 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 So here we go. I'm still cute though. Look at here. So, um, again, good morning. Hi, Mother Reese. I love you. And please, please tell Brother Reese that I said hello. I love him. I know he is right there by you. I love you so much. Enjoyed our conversation this week. I love y'all so much. Um, yes, yes. Hey, <laughs> hey, Brother Morris. I love you. Miss B, Faye, you guys are faithful. I appreciate you. And I thank you for your prayers for me. Amen. Y'all know a sister needed prayers this week. The enemy is busy and the thieves are out. Y'all be safe out there. Um, 
uh, and I'll tell you a little later about how the thief thought that he could come in, but my joy is in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So you, the world didn't give it to me. And I promise y'all the world cannot take this joy away from me. And my happiness is, is really about what happens, but I thank God for joy. Amen. And if you have joy on this morning, thank God for joy. Amen. So today's Sunday school lesson is titled a regal response, a regal, meaning a magnificent. It's an outstanding and out lavished response. Response is how you react to something. Okay. And that's here. That's what we're going to talk about, how we respond, how we react. And it ought to be top notch when it comes to what? holy light and who is that holy light god jesus is that holy light sent from god amen amen so our sunday school lesson comes from the book of matthew and we've been following matthew's version of leading us into christ we started with his heritage being you know his heritage the call through his heritage meaning that your family line is everything amen i'm doing my family genealogy now and the things that we're learning about our family and the memories let me tell you it it is important to know who you come from ah that's important to know who do you come from? What line did you come through? And then the second lesson was on the call from birth. And today the Lord reminded me, this call that's on my life is from birth. Hey, Sandra, how are you? Y'all welcome to Sunday school this morning. It is from, it was from birth. God ordained it. He planned it. Even before I was ever planted into my mother's womb, he already had a call on my life. Hey, Vera, welcome to Sunday school, you guys. I appreciate you this morning. Amen. So a regal response to holy light. This is our outlandish, our magnificent re reaction to the holy light. Amen. Matthew 2 chapter 2 verses 7 through 15 amen so this sunday school lesson comes from the chat uh the book of matthew this is his version chapter 2 verses 7 through 15 amen and the idea of this lesson or the commentators hope was that you would walk away being um and able to explain and understand how these wise men point to the universality of jesus christ's mission Meaning, you're, the hope is, is that we would understand that how th th they point us to understand the whole idea of the Christ being born. And then that we would be, have a grievous heart, like that we would have a feeling of, of, of grievance to those who suffer innocently due to the world's brokenness, man, and sin. This world right now is broken and it is filled up with sin. But God had a mission when he sent Jesus Christ. He, and we don't want to forget that. And there is still a response, a reaction required from us as born again believers, even in this day. Amen. Why? Because the world is broken and that ought to do something for you. When you look out and I see the mass confusion that's going on in the world. Great morning, Sister Comiska. I love you, girl. I miss you so much. But there, it ought to do something to your heart when you look out. And, and I, I just see just when I'm, you know, sometimes scrolling through Facebook and the, just the mass confusion that's out there. And it just troubles my spirit. It troubles my heart. And I want to help people. Amen. And that's what we want to be able to do. And then that we would join with people in every every race, every culture. I know the world is divided. And that's what the enemy wants. The world to be divided. But it is our responsibility as born again believers, as joint heirs to the Christ. It is our res responsibility to bring people back together to worship to bring them back to the to the king of all nations and that is our king Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
So this uh, particular lesson is very familiar because a lot of, you know, we're in that season, that Christmas season, and, and we, we always share the Christmas story, the birth of Christ, which as believers, this is why we celebrate Christmas. I, I mean, if you look over here, I've got nice little gifts. I sent my granddaughter home with her gifts, and, you know, I have things that are ready to share and love upon those that I love, but the reason for the season is Jesus Christ, and in in this season, this is when we hear all these familiar stories, the birth of Christ, the nativity scene, the, the, and, and this particular story about three wise men. And I love it because just so y'all know, there is nowhere in scripture that there were three. We get that three from the fact that they present three particular gifts. But it doesn't mean that one person couldn't have presented that gift or 20 people couldn't have presented the gift. But Nonetheless, we just I, I think it's good to be careful and to be to understand that just because we take and make a story out of something, we want to stick with the truth of the word, right? The truth of the gospel. The Bible tells us that the truth makes us free. Amen. So just so that we know the truth and we follow the truth. Amen. So the book of Matthew, starting uh, in chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 7. So, um, and again, this is uh, opening up to the, 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 the story that we know of as most people, as a kid, I grew up hearing it as the three kings of Orient are. Y'all remember the song? We three kings of Orient are travel, uh, uh, bearing gifts. We travel so far, fields and fountains, moors and mountains, following the yonder star remember the song but uh yeah i don't know if it was three um what i do know is that they were wise though i do know that part they were wise men and so matthew 2 starting with chapter at verse 7 uh it says it opens up like this then herod okay y'all know i love an opening okay so then herod now, we got to pause right there because you need to know who Herod is. Okay, Herod. Oh, Herod was a, he was actually known as Herod the Great. He was not a nice guy. Okay, he was actually pretty awful. And guess what? He came through a lineage of not so nice people. Matter of fact, as time goes on, the Herod that is related to him will be the Herod that will behead John the Baptist. Mm. It's important to know what line you come through. What is your family heritage? So uh, Matthew 2, chap uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 7 opens up. Then Herod. And this is that this Herod, he was known, he had done some things. If you go and you read about him and you study, Herod was so bad. Herod killed his wife, he killed his in-laws, he killed his brother. He killed, he was a murderous somebody and the people were afraid of him. They were very concerned. He was very emotional and he reacted. Okay. Now we, the subject of our lesson is a regal response to holy life. We, we're going to do what we're going to have a magnificent response or reaction to the holy life. But Herod is going to have a response too. Okay. So it opens up then Herod. When he had privately called the wise men, okay, so let me get you up to what happened. There are these wise men. They are probably from like what we know as Persia or even modern day Iran. And they were probably not Jewish, okay? They, um, and I like that because what it says is that God had always come for the Gentiles, for us, those that are not Jewish, okay? Even though in my family line, believe it or not, I do have Jewish blood in my line. And that is, uh, and it's, uh, um, it's called a Nazi Jewish. And that's in my bloodline. And that traces back to the Christ. Y'all don't know how that makes me feel. It's important to know who you come from, where you come through. Amen. My mother used to say, if you don't learn your history, you are, you're inclined to, to repeat it. So I wanted to know, I wanted to know, and I still want to know, and I'm searching, who am I? Where do I come from? Who do I come from? So I know to, to who, what I need to do to be all, what, what am I destined for? It's important y'all. So here, Herod, uh, these three wise men, they are 
not kings. They really are wise men. They were scientists. They were astrologers. They were known for their science. Um, science nature for astrology. And I know that the Bible teaches us we shouldn't follow after astrology, but these men followed astrology. Um, they were um, mathematicians, so they were very intelligent, highly intelligent, well-respected, smart people, okay? So, and, and I love the fact that they were way away away from uh, where the Christ is born yet they somehow were connected to this story and don't don't get mixed up because in even in the line of of of, of Christ there were not they were not all uh good people you had uh Rahab the harlot you had uh 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 Tamar um yeah who tricked her father-in-law remember we taught that you had tamar so even through the line of christ you had some sketchy people but let me tell you when god steps in my past is just that my past great morning lady kemp welcome to sunday school thank you so much for gracing our page this morning but my my past is just that it is my past it's the plan of god that matters in my life who i was is one thing but who i am and who i'm who i'm destined to be ooh, i'm telling you if you begin to think about not so much of who you were but who you are today and who you're destined to be based on the promises of jesus christ amen so here, these, these wise men, these scientists, these astrologers, these mathematicians, these men with wisdom like you don't know, they had so much wisdom that they understood that there was a particular star that had such significance that it could only be what the promise had been. See, because they knew people were expecting the Messiah and they didn't know by how this Messiah was going to come, yet they expected the Messiah to come. But these wise men, as they studied the, the earth and they studied the skies and the stars and they begin to add it up and they begin to lay it together, they realized that star must be the star to the king of kings. My God today, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see you and follow you where you are. I want to be where Jesus is. I want, where is he? I want to be where he is because where Jesus is, things are happening. I know that we are all right when we're where Jesus is is amen so here herod so here we are th th they they are following this star these three well i keep saying three because that's what i'm accustomed to but we don't know if it was three we do know that these wise men followed the star they had used astrology they were using math and they were using their scientific mind lord and you know what that just put in my mind thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit that I'm, I'm grateful for doctors and scientists on today. I'm grateful for them, mom. I'm grateful for them because that's the mind that Christ put in them to know and to learn and to help us to know and to learn and to understand. Lord, I thank you for that. I, I, I thank God right now for that because I have questions in my own mind about the scientists sciences that are going on right now and trying to understand things and i thank god that i have an assurance in my mind that just like those wise men who didn't even know they only went off of what they believed and what knowledge god had given them and they followed it until they found the christ amen the christ child amen lord i thank you for that that was personal y'all for me i needed that that reassurance from the holy spirit on this morning i needed that thank you god thank you for loving me enough thank you mm. who thank you lord for loving me enough so matthew 2 7 opens up then herod herod when he had privately called the wise men inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared so here's herod this not so nice man um the 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 wise men, they come and they don't, they come, but they are not right where they should be. So they begin to inquire where they actually come and they ask, where is 
the, where is the, the Christ child? Because they know he's got to be there. Hey, Kim, welcome to Sunday school, girl. I hope, how are you and Mother Purple? I love you guys. Um, they inquired. They, they actually might have said a little too much, but they didn't know. They were wise men, and they just were going for what they knew. They were looking and searching for the Christ. Amen? So when they get there, they, they, they're, they're near, but they're not exactly there, so they begin to inquire. And in their inquiry, they, they were wondering, where is the Christ child? Now, here is Herod, who is in control. He's in rule. Now this going to sound real familiar about a person who is in control, but they're so insecure, even though they have the power, but they're so insecure that they would do harmful things and that they would be afraid of even their own position. Listen, if you are in position, Hey Jen, I just saw you pop up there. Hey girl, I love you girl. Um, they, they, um, he to be you're in control and you have the floor yet you're so insecure that you can't even do your job for looking over there he he was so he was concerned and afraid of a baby of a child huh yes he was though he was so here when Herod had heard they they came looking cuz these three wise men they were looking for the king they came looking for the Christ, the king. And when Herod got word, he's like, hey, come wait, t come here, y'all. And he took them privately. He came and he wanted to talk to them private because he wanted to get information. He wanted to, you know how somebody want to know something? They won't talk to you in front of everybody. They might inbox you. Y'all know how it go. And, or they may want to stop. I'm going to stop by. I want to talk to you. Because they want to they wanna talk to you privately. So here, Herod calls the, the wise men. And he privately to, call, um, to talk to them and to inquire. The, the Bible says diligently. Like he is, give me everything. Tell me all you know about this. Uh, the, he, he, says, he says, I want to know when you first saw the star. See, he see, and that tells you he also he respected their position as wise men. He that they had followed this star. So he didn't want to just know, you know, about the Christ child. He wanna know how long y'all been following this star. I need to know because he was the the wise men, they knew who they were looking for. They just didn't get to the right place. And Herod wanted to know when did you when did you see the star so even Herod knew and had to have some thought or belief in the coming messiah and he felt threatened by this why you say he felt threatened just keep reading you'll see why he why why I say that so verse 8 says and he sent them to Bethlehem so he sends them Go to Bethlehem. Now, the Bible tells us that that's where the Christ is going to come for, through Bethlehem. Amen. So verse eight says, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, now go and search diligently for the young child. See, because now he knows we're no longer looking for a baby. We're looking for a child. OK, so because we're talking about from the time that the shepherds went, the shepherds got there. He was in a manger. But when the wise men get there, even though the nativity scene shows those three wise men there, biblically, yeah, the, the Christ had to be a, a good, close to two years old, if not two years old at that time. Amen. So he's uh, verse eight and he sent them to Bethlehem and, and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, Bring me word again that I may come, <laughs> that I may come and worship him also. So obviously we know that the wise men, their whole point for coming was to worship him. The whole point for coming to the Christ, this child, this baby was to worship him. They followed, they traveled far bringing gifts just to worship him. If that is not a note to us today, the reason I rose up this morning, the reason I go through all that I go through in preparation, the reason we do this as, as the called out ones is to worship him. This is my worship. 
This is my worship to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I go into my pocket of my earned money and I render it as an offering, that's my worship to him. The reason that I follow him, the reason that I live for him is to worship him. The wise men, they came all the way from their country, all the way to Bethlehem, to Jerusalem. They came simply to worship him. They came to work. If you get that in your spirit, they came to worship him. Just to worship him. So Herod said, now go, go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem and look diligently. I mean, look at every house, go to everybody, look for him, find him, and then come back. This is what Herod said. Come back and tell me so I can go worship him too. I want to go worship the child too. And I like that because Herod had realized that based on the time that the wise men had told him that they first saw the star to the time that they reached there, they, he knew then that this was a child by now. Okay. He, he had been grown up. He's no longer an arm baby. Right? So he says, I want to worship him too. Now there may be a difference in the way Herod wants to worship though. Mm. See, the wise men came, they came prepared to worship. They followed, they sought after, they inquired about. Oh, come on here. God's people inquire, follow, seek, huh? Yeah, that's what we do so that we can worship him. And that's what the wise men did. Now, Herod is like, go, you go find him for us. Go find him, go look hard and then come back and tell me. So I could go worship him too. Hmm. Verse nine. When they had heard the king, when they had heard King Herod, they departed. So they, they were wise, but they weren't able to discern because had they been able to discern, they would have known Herod's heart to worship was not equivalent to their heart of worship. So they, they, and, and this is also another way of, of, probably knowing that they weren't kings because another king wouldn't have been subject to that king. So when King Herod gave them orders, Herod said, go and seek for him and come back and tell me. The, the next scripture, verse 9 says, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. See, they were led by, see, let me tell you, if you want to find God, all you got to do is seek for him. He will make a way for you to find him. He ain't lost, but he will open up. He will light it up for you so that you can see him for who he is. Amen. Amen. God, give us eyes to see. Thank you, Lord. When they had, so when, verse nine, when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star, which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood. Let me tell you, God won't lead you astray. You ask him, he will, he'll show you, ask him what you want, ask him for what you need. I'm a witness. I'm telling you, I remember two years ago, a person took from me she that person took from me let me tell you two years later that person looked sought me out to pay penance to me for what they took from me god will do it and i'm telling you he'll do it and, and he will do it and if he did it once he'll do it again amen amen thank you lord so they had heard from the king they departed and the star had led them right to it, it stood over where the young child was. So the star led them exactly to Mary and Joseph's house. I'm talking exactly to their house. I didn't say it. It's in the scripture. It led them to, it's, the Bible says, it says, the, the, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the young child was. Amen. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Now, they didn't just say, oh, God, thank you. No, exceeding means with 
I mean, with everything they had. See, when you come to Jesus, you ought to worship him with everything you have, all of your beings. You ought to, it should not be hard to lift your hands in the air and really wave them like you just don't care. Why? Because the king of kings is your king. The Lord of lords is your Lord. So this is what they, when they, they had traveled on faith. They, they didn't, they only went by what they believed. My God, they went by what they believed. And when they came, when what they believed had come into fruition, when the star that they followed, all it was, was a star. It was just a star, but they had studied it and faith was mixed in with it and it seemed right and they followed their heart. They walked by faith and they, they when they got there, the star led them exactly to the Christ child. And the Bible says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And verse 11, and when they were come into the house, see, they, the star led them right to Jesus, right to Mary and Joseph's house. The star led three wise men. It didn't say they was three Holy Ghost filled men. It didn't say they was three men that could speak in unknown tongues uh, with, uh, they, as they, that the Spirit gave them utterance. It didn't say that they were three men who could lay hands on the sick and they recovered. It didn't say that. And these are all the wonderful amazing things that we get to do as believers. But these were just three wise men who obviously believed. Uh, they they believed in the, the people that was right there around them hadn't done this. The people that Herod hadn't even done this. The, the, those that were in the town of Bethlehem hadn't come and brought gifts unto him. But three wise men by faith, they came from far. They traveled a distance and they only went according to a star. They had heaven guidance. Ah, yay, God. They had heavenly guidance. My God, Lord, lead us, great Jehovah. Lead us. Show us where we are to go. Teach us of what we are to do because he will do it. These wise men, they followed. They walked by faith and they followed the star and it led them right to the, the Christ child. And when they got there, the Bible says they were they had exceeding joy. They were so excited. They rejoiced exceedingly. And when they had come into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. Yeah, you know, like a typical two-year-old. If strangers come in the house, who knew what this magi was dressed like? They, I'm sure they had a certain look to them. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. They were, they stood out from the rest of the people there in Bethlehem. Yeah. So I'm sure that would make Jesus, the child stand near his mother. Now, what I do find interesting is that at this point, Joseph isn't really, isn't mentioned at this point. I just find that interesting. And what I, I, I and that's not a negative thing. I, what I really respect, and I alluded to this last Sunday, is I respect that Joseph, he did exactly what God told him through the angel. The angel told him, marry her and raise my child. But this is, God was like, this is my child. Great morning, uh, uh, Brother Rick. Welcome to Sunday school. And so Joseph obviously was a quiet, he wasn't an outspoken person. He had to really love Mary to go through what he was going through. And I noticed Joseph isn't in this scene. So here the, and I just, I love that because Joseph played his position. And I, I keep asking God, teach me, Lord, to play my position. Humble me so that I stay in my position. I don't want to do your job. I don't want to do their job. I just want to do the work you called me to do. Whatever that work is, it doesn't matter how other people see it or how they judge it or how they value it. It's what you called me to, God. The, 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 the three wise men, they did exactly what they were called to do, to travel from far country and come find the Christ child and worship him. Ah, my God. 
Yes, Joseph do. He did exactly what God told him to do. Marry her. Raise my child. Uh-huh. Protect my child. I'm going to tell you all about it. Your job is not, you will father him, but you are not his father. And Joseph played that role. I love that. I respect that in him. Verse 11 says, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down. They fell down. These three wise men. These three wise men, these magi, they felt that when they saw him next to his mother, he wasn't in a manger. He was next to his mother. That's what tells us then he wasn't a little baby anymore. He was next to his mother. But when they saw him, when the wise men saw him, the Bible says they fell down and worship him. They fell down and worshiped him. See, it's something about coming into the presence of our Christ. When you get in the presence of Jesus, when you get in the presence of Jesus, you will fall down and worship him. You will fall down and worship him. The presence of God is so mighty. It's so powerful. You can't just stand like you're great. You will bow before him. You will fall down to worship him because he's the king of kings. They traveled far to find the king of kings. Ah, and the star led them to him and they fell down. They had exceeding joy that they had found him. But then when they did, when they came into his presence, it didn't matter who was around. They fell down. The Bible says it and they worshiped him. Hallelujah. They fell down and they worshiped him. It says, and when they had opened their treasures. So not only, they didn't just begin to worship him saying, oh, great king. Ah, we have sought you out and now glory to God. We find you. Hallelujah. But then the Bible says the worship continued. Why? The worship continues say, because it didn't even stop. It says, and they fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, y'all don't even know. I feel that thing in my spirit. Hallelujah. This is something about being in the presence of God, in the presence of our Savior, in the presence of the Messiah, in the presence of the anointed one. They had come in the presence of Emmanuel, who is with us. Amen. So, when they did this, they fell down, they worshiped them, and then they opened their treasures. Let me tell you something. There is a blessed worship in giving of your treasures. Yes, your treasures of your finance, the treasures of your time, the treasures of your spirit, the treasures of your prayer time, the, pr pr the treasures of going out and helping others, the treasure. They opened up their treasures. And in here, these treasures were like treasure boxes and that means they were filled with things they came ready to worship god huh nobody had to prime them to do it nobody had to pump them to do it they came with the sole purpose of worship they came to worship the king of kings y'all and he was just a kid oh my god so it says and they opened their treasures they presented him gifts. Listen, what is your gift to the King of Kings today? What is your gift to the King of Kings today? What is it that's in your treasures that you came to pour out unto him? Huh? Remember when the woman, when she anointed him, see, she broke her treasure in that alabaster box. That was her treasure. She opened it up. She broke it and she began to lavish it on the master's feet. Huh? And the treasure of her hair, the Bible says she began to dry them. See, she came prepared to worship him. 
When we come before our God, we ought to come ready, prepared to worship him. What's in your treasure box? What did you come prepared to give, to render unto him, to show you worship him on this morning? Amen. Here they, they had opened their treasures and the Bible says in verse 11, they presented him, they presented unto him gifts. They presented gifts unto him. Huh? So the gifts of gold, oh my God, and frankincense and myrrh. So these were the most precious of those gifts and what, and these, and they actually have significant meaning. So the purpose of the gifts were, they were testimonial, right? They were prophetic. They were all, these gifts were speaking a language unto him. See, when we worship, our worship is language unto God. My raising of my hand shows that I worship him in surrendering my all and all to him. That I give everything to him. When I lay prostrate before him, it is showing that I humble myself before the mighty hands of the great God of all gods. Amen. When I when I raise my hands and and clapping. I, I'm showing that I agree with you, God. I agree that you are king. I agree that there's none higher, none greater, that there is no comparison to you. See, I've come to worship him. My royal response is my worship to him. Glory to God. My royal response to God is that my worship, I came to to worship. I woke up this morning with my mind set on worshiping him on this morning. They worshiped him with gold, which represented his kingship. Yeah, they did. They worshiped him with frankincense, which is a fragrance, a very strong fragrance that is it is that it's used, amen, to, to, to it's like an incense. They, it, it's used to, to show worship. It's, it, was, it was used to show worship. And then myrrh, which was also another very uh, prominent, uh, and, and these are very expensive, if you notice, gold, frankincense, very expensive. And then myrrh, also very expensive, but was used as an anointing of the body, usually during burial. So they were showing for they were give they gave gifts to show he would be king. Yeah. And that he would rule and that he was worthy of worship and praise. And then that he would be the ultimate sacrifice for all sin. Hallelujah. And Jesus was what? Just about two years old. My God today. Lord, I love you. And I came to worship you. This is my regal, my royal. This is my magnificent response. My reaction to the fact that I know that he's the king. And this is what they, the example of what these wise men did for us. Now, after they had presented their gifts to him, verse 12 says, and being warned of God. Now, remember, I told you these three, these, these wise men, the, the King Herod had said to them, now y'all go and find, go seek, go to Bethlehem and seek out the young child and look diligently for him. And when you find him, come back, come back and tell me so that I, the great Herod can go and worship him too. Now here's what, uh, let me tell you, God will never lead us astray. He'll never do it. He will never lead us astray. You don't believe me? Try him. If you don't know, ask. He said, if you, you, he said, ask me, he don't withhold any, there is no good thing that the Lord will withhold from them who love him, who walk up right before him. We diligently, we diligently serve him. He's not going to withhold any good thing from you. Not today, not today this morning he won't do it no and he, guess what he ain't gonna do it tomorrow and he sure didn't do it back then yesterday he is a good God so here they are here verse 12 and being warned of God I love it God didn't even send the angel God told them himself he says verse 12 and being warned of God in a dream so after they had went and worshiped the king the the the, the Christ child they obviously had gone and taken some, get some rest because they got to travel back. 
But while they were asleep, God visits them in a dream and he warns them. He warns them in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They, so they departed into their own country another way. See, sometimes you can't go back the way you came. Nuh uh. Not when you see Jesus. You ain't gonna never go back the way you came. See, they had come into the presence of the Holy One, huh? And their response was worship. Their response was worship. And once they had come into his presence, let me tell you, when you come into the presence of God, you will never be the same. You will be changed forever. You will be changed forever. And God let them know, listen, y'all ain't got the spirit of discernment. Now y'all smart. It's all get up. They were wise. Well-known wise scientists, well-known wise mathematicians, well-known wise astrologers. They knew what they knew, but they didn't have the ability to discern. See, now we as believers, you ought to have your discernment on so that you will know what you've come in contact with. You will know then how to properly respond. You will know. Uh huh. So, but they didn't have it. But God didn't lead them astray. Just like God through the eight, through the uh, star led them to His Son, He said, "Listen now, don't go back to King Herod. Go the other way." And that's exactly what they did. See, they had enough wisdom to know God when they heard Him. Just like they had enough wisdom to have faith to believe that the star would lead them to the Christ. Hallelujah, Lord! Increase my faith. And help my unbelief. Father God do it for me. Hallelujah. So they, and so they went um, to their own country another way. Verse 13. And when they were departed. Behold the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. There go Joseph. See I'm telling you I love the spirit of Joseph. I love the spirit of Joseph. Hi Joanne. Welcome to Sunday school this morning. Let me tell Yeah brother Steve this is good. Yes it is. See when you get into the real story. Not the kid story they told us growing up. I'm talking about the Bible real story. We'll learn some things and we'll be enlightened and we'll understand the whole point and the purpose of our crisis that we were created huh, to worship him. Uh, I was created to worship him. He'll let me do all kinds of things in this life, but I was created to worship him. And when you come before him, come ready to worship him. Come bearing gifts ready to worship him with everything, your best. Bring him your absolute best. Don't hold back because he won't ever hold back from you. Oh, I love Jesus on this morning. I love him so much. I love him just a little bit more than I loved him yesterday. Ha, huh? yes, I do. Amen. Amen. And so verse 13 says, and when they had departed, behold, an angel. Now, we don't have so many angel visitations. Y'all remember the angel showed up and talked to Mary. Then the angel had to come and talk to Joseph, tell him, don't leave her, don't divorce her, don't put her away. Stay with her. Raise my child. His name is going to be Jesus. He's going to save the people from all their sins. That's what the angel, the angel, the angel came and told, I mean, the, the, the angels, let me tell y'all, be careful. Don't, don't be, don't, don't, don't shy away too much from entertaining strangers. The Bible says for many, many have entertained angels unaware. They didn't even know that an angel was in their midst. Thank you, Jesus, for angels. And here again, the angel of the Lord shows up to Joseph in a dream. He says, and verse 13, and when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise and take the young child. Notice he didn't say, take your son. Notice that he said, because see the order is important. See, it was important for Joseph to stay in the role that he was called to. It's important for us to know what you've been called to do and do that, do that. And do it under the power and the anointing of God. And that you will be effective. Don't do nothing more or nothing less. Just do what he told you to do. He told Joseph, 
Don't divorce Mary. Stay with her. Marry her. And he immediately got up and married her. And then he tells Joseph now. Now he didn't notice. Joseph ain't saying nothing. Joseph is not even visible right now until right here. After the, the wise men leave and depart. The Lord talks to them. They go another way. And now here Joseph in his sleep. Here comes that angel telling him. Get up, he says, arise, take the young child and his mother. Y'all better read the scriptures so we know what God is showing us. He's letting us know. See, Joseph had no problem with being in the role that he was in. He knew he was not the biological father, but he had a great responsibility to care for the Christ child. And so the angel of the Lord says to him, arise. He was like, get up, get up. Come on, when the, when the Lord tell you to move, you better move. When he said, get up, you, he said, arise. He basically, get up, wash your face, brush your teeth, let's go. He says, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee. So we ain't talking about no, let's get up and let's plan and let's, what we go, no. He said, flee. Flee means to go quickly. See, because some, see, listen. When the angel of the Lord come to you, that's why it behooves us to pray. I have been quoting this this whole week so much. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Don't lean to your own understanding. See, Joseph, if he would have leaned to his own understanding, his own understanding told him, you know what? She done messed up. I'm going to leave her alone, but I care about her, so I'm not going to put her away and shame her out. I'm going to do it quiet. That was his own understanding. But the Bible said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, every single last one of your ways, acknowledge him. That's right, mom. Acknowledge him. And then guess what? That acknowledgement going to bring forth something. He says, if you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. My apologies. I just looked up. I know that it's 10 o'clock for some people that have to go, but I appreciate you. Hey, uh, Danelda, how you doing, Grace? That's Grace. How you doing, girl? Amen. Blessings on you, my friend, my sister. Blessings on you. Welcome to Sunday school. We, I'm almost done here. But for those who have to leave, I do understand. I, I, I expect you to honor the church that you are under. I expect you to honor those that God has. I pray that God has given leadership over you and that you will respect them with your time, with your finances, with your service. Amen. 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 So back to this. So he says, um, and when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph in a dream. And he says, arise, take the young child and his mother and flee. Go quickly. Flee into Egypt. Y'all don't even know. All of this is fulfilling the scripture. Hey, Tierra, my baby girl. How are you, sweetheart? Blessings on you. Welcome to Sunday school. So this is all fulfilling the scripture. Amen. So he tells Joseph, get up, get you, get the child get his mother and you flee and he puts that responsibility on joseph i was listening to bishop uh bishop huggins this morning and he was talking about the power of the father like the necessity of the father the role of the father and joseph plays that role well he played his role as the father well and he, so, cause he says here, the angel, he, first of all, he's a man of God that hears from God. How about that part? Yes. He's a man of God that hears from God. Now you want to know a very attractive attribute of a man is a man who hears from God. I ain't talking about little G God. I'm talking about the almighty God. Yeah. That now I'm going to tell you, that's just a little thing. If you he need to hear from God. How about that part? Let him be able to hear from God. And that's what Joseph does. The angel says, arise, take the young child and his mother, flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. So I love this. So the angel tells him, look, get up. Y'all need to go and you need to go quick. You need to go, go to Egypt and you actually going to stay there until I 
tell you. I'm going to come back and tell you when you can leave. Lord, lead me, great Jehovah. Tell me where I need to go, what I need to do. See, this tells me God leads us. He leads his people. Lord Jesus, people are confused. Why are you confused? You're confused because you haven't asked the Lord. If you ask the Lord, he will tell you. He will show you. He won't have us ignorant. He said it. You got church folks out here saying all kind of things, posting up. Look, if it ain't your arena, stay out. You do what you're supposed to do. Do your I'm I'm taking the I'm taking the lesson of of Joseph. Help me God. I had great advice from Lady Kemp this week. And I appreciate that. She gave me advice. And I took that advice and I moved quickly on her advice. Let me tell you something. You want to be led right because see, on my own understanding, on your own understanding, you will do things that might come off foolish. They may not come because we be, we'll do it based on our feelings. We'll do it based on what other people said based on. And that's not what. No. Help me, God, to stay in my lane. Just the, I don't care if the lane is this narrow. You put me in the lane, I want to stay in that lane. You do your lane, and I promise you, if the Lord help me, I'm going to do my lane. Nothing more, nothing less. And I'm okay with that. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to keep me okay with that. Hey, Sister Reed, how y'all doing, Lil? How y'all doing, Lil's? I love you all on this morning. Amen. So in continuing, so he tells him, he says, you stay there until I bring the word. This is in verse 13. And he says, now listen, see, let me tell you how good God is. He, he gives him instructions through the angel. He tells him, get up and go take. He says, who to, who to take, take, take your wife and your child and my child, take the wife and the child and y'all flee. He tells him, I need you to go now. And when you flee, don't tell them just to flee. He tells them where to flee to. And then he tells them how long to stay there until I come and tell you to leave. Okay? And then he tells him why. I love this. He says, you'll stay until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. I told y'all in the beginning, King Herod was a dirty guy. That king was a dirty king. That king killed his own wife. He killed his own in-laws, his, his mother and father-in-law. He killed his own parents. He killed his brother. He killed his sister. He was a murderer and he was insecure. And he was, let me tell you, insecurity, it, 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 it breeds jealousy. And when you're jealous, ain't no telling what you will do. Ain't no telling what you will say. Ain't no telling how you will act. And the people around him knew. And they were all very concerned about him. Because they knew King Herod was awful. He was a terror. He was considered, the, he was, they called him the great Herod. Mm, and I don't mean great in a good way. Okay? He was, he had a, he was, he was quick mean. Quick mean guy. Okay, so, and the angel tells him, because Herod is going to seek the young child. Herod ain't coming looking for you, uh, Father Joseph. He ain't looking for Mother Mary. He coming to look for the child. Y'all heard what I said. Y'all read it for yourself. It, it didn't say the grown-up Jesus. He ain't coming looking for the grown-up Jesus, the man Jesus. He coming... He's seeking the child. And if you know the story, Herod actually, in, he sends out a decree that every male child under the age of two, two and under, he had them killed. That's why they had to flee quick. See, Herod thought he was slick. But still, let me tell you, you can't ever, there are, our king of kings has no rivals. There's no one that could stand up against him. I love to say it in my prayers. He's king of kings. He has no rivals. There is no enemy that could stand against him. He is the victorious one. Already he is. He's two years old and they want him because they're threatened. I 
I mean, anytime three wise, oh, I keep saying three, but anytime wise men travel from afar bringing precious gifts simply to worship the Christ child, oh, there must be something to him. And Herod was scared. He was insecure in his ability to lead. See, he was trying to lead through fear by mur being murderous and being mean, and he still was insecure. You know, people like that, people see you walk in the room and it bother their spirit. Insecure. People hear you talk, you ain't doing nothing but teaching or preaching the gospel, and it bother their spirit. <laughs> Insecurity. But I'm safe. And I'm very comfortable in the lane that I've been called to. See, the Lord reminded me this morning. I called you to something, little girl. I called you. Yeah, you got these pieces of paper. And I got a lot of pieces of paper. But I was called to this in every aspect that I get to do it. From my home to my job to, to ministry. I'm called to it. I didn't call it. He did. He anointed me. To be the mother of three amazing children. He anointed me to be a wife. He anointed me to minister the gospel. He anointed me to bring health to a health system. He anointed me to do it. He did. And whatever he called you to, guess what? He anointed you. He called you to that. Amen. Amen. So uh, he, he, let, he let him know. The angel warned him. The King Herod will seek the child to destroy him. But see, God had already made an escape for him. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes trouble seems to overwhelm us. And it gets to be a lot. Hey, Sister Cheryl, it can be a lot. But where, when we seem trapped, God has made a plan of escape for us. Just like he did for Jesus Christ, the child. He told That angel came to Joseph and said, take the child and his mother. I love that. Y'all don't know. See, God, the, God don't make no mistakes. He meant it just the way he said it. He tells Joseph, take the child. That's who you protected. I anointed you and called you to father my son on earth to protect him. Now take the child and his mother because <laughs> he's going to need his mother. And y'all flee and go to Egypt. And you stay there until I come back and tell you different. Why? Because Herod is going to seek to destroy the child. Let me tell you, you can't hurt God's. If you belong to God, you, you can touch my stuff, but you can't hurt me. Uh-uh. I belong to God. Uh, uh The price has already been paid. Yeah. So verse 14, when he arose, he took the child, talking about Joseph, when jo Joseph simply obeys. And I said this last week, please, God, I ask you, help me to have that same spirit that, that Joseph had. Joseph heard what God said, and he just did it. He didn't question it. He didn't ho-hum about it. He didn't try to rationalize it out. He didn't see Jesus didn't have to bend down on the ground and write in the dirt for him. Jesus didn't have to spit in the dirt and heal him again. Joseph just did what he said. I want that spirit, Lord. Help me to have that type of obedience towards you. That I hear what you say and then I just do what you say. Lord, I thank you. So Joseph, verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. So that tell me that he got right on up because he was asleep. He was asleep. The angel came and told him what to do. He told him, arise and flee quick. Get out of here. Go to Egypt. Take the child and his mother. Y'all go to Egypt. Stay there till I tell you because Herod wants to kill him. He gets up. He took the child and his mother by night and they departed into Egypt. And if you know other parts of the story, Herod did. He, 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 he commanded that the children, two, all male children, two and under, be killed. Amen. Verse 15 says, and, was, and he was there until the death of Herod. Wow. See, some things just going to have to die out. Wow. Holy Spirit. Some things just going to have to die out. Wow. See, so, woo, 
sometimes, ah, my God, sometimes you just going to have to depart until some things die. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, teach, God teach, teach us. Mm. Sometimes it's just going to have to die out before you can move forward. Who y'all remember the children of Israel? They, they, they were promised the promised land of Canaan and they were so messy and full of mess on the journey that the original crew had to die out before they could go over and take what was promised to them. They didn't even have to take it. It was promised to them. They just had to go claim it here. Joseph, the birth, the, the, the Christ child and Mary, they have, they end up staying in Egypt until the death of Herod. So verse 15 says, and, and they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, and out of G Egypt have I called my son, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you, my mother used to say, God got a way of doing things. And I like the way he do it. Hey, Lady Huggins, I love you so much. You tell Bishop he blessed me this morning. And that, that, that whole father lesson really runs well with today's Sunday school lesson. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hallelujah. So a royal regal response to holy life. Basically, I'm, I'm saying to you now, my royal response to the holy light, to the holy one, is my worship. I come ready to worship him. I come ready to pour out my best to him. Huh? He's king of kings. Yeah. He's lord of lords. He is the anointed one. He is Emmanuel. God is with us. And I come to worship him. And I'm telling you, just like the wise men, when you come into the presence of God, when you come into the presence of the Holy One, you will never be the same. See, they will never be the same. And, they, and you've got to come by faith. You've got to come ready to receive and to give to him. See, they received from him the, the, the acceptance that what they had believed in faith really was what they believed. My God, we walk by faith, not by sight, huh? But those things, he said, faith is the substance of the things we hope for. The wise men had only hoped they were walking. They had traveled so far on faith and on hope. But when they got there, it had become substance it had become reality for them my god so i love the lord on today this is an awesome awesome pre-christmas lesson it is an encouragement for us the for unto us a child is born unto us a savior my god he is risen we have the king of kings we have the lord of lords and guess what? He is in our midst right now. Why you say that, Reverend Lorenda? Because he is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. God is with us. Oh, I love him for that today. So the regal response to holy life. What's the regal response? What is your royal reaction to the Christ this morning? It is to worship him. How did you come prepared to worship him on this morning? Did you come ready to hear and receive? See, that's worship. I came ready to receive. Even when I'm teaching, I'm ready to receive. I'm listening as well as teaching. Yes, Sister Mary, Emmanuel. I, to me, that is something I want to go out on my patio and I just want to bellow it out into the atmosphere. Emmanuel. Huh? Yeah, God. Emmanuel. Glory to God. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, God. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That's 
That's right. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We love him with an everlasting love. Why? Because that's how he loves us. I tell you, I came to worship him. When I got up this morning, my mindset was to worship him in spirit and in truth. I came to worship him. I came to give him of my treasures like the wise men did. They came with treasures. They planned to come and worship him. They didn't even know if they would really, really find him. But by faith, they followed a star because they were smart. And they had wisdom and they could add a little bit. And they could, and they knew how to figure it out. I'm going to tell you, in this lesson, the Lord through the Holy Spirit has opened up my, my mind and he has given me a spirit of encouragement. And I am grateful to God for every scientist out there, for every doctor. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for good, 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 wise doctors and, and righteous uh, scientists that are doing what they know to do best, God. And then for wisdom, huh? I'm grateful for wisdom that I don't have to be in fear or be concerned but the god if you can lead wise men from afar by a star surely you will take care of me god i love you i love you so i seek after him on this morning i tell you this this season this season lord of this christmas season is such a beautiful time to reflect and to remember and to recall Jesus really is the reason, y'all. I know we say it as a cliche, but it is not a cliche to me. He really is the reason. He is the reason. There is no other reason for celebrating this time of year except the Christ was born. Except that he came through generations, 42 generations. Except that this was an appointed call from God to reconcile us back to himself. This is the reason that we celebrate him. Now, I don't need December the 26th, the 25th because today is December the 20th, 12, 20, 2020. T today is a good day to celebrate the King of Kings, to bow in worship to him, to, to bellow out that I know who he is and I love the authority and the power of his name. I get authority and power in the use of the name Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we can rejoice in that on today. I'm grateful for those wise men, whether it was three, whether it was one or 20. I appreciate their humble and their obedience and their walk of faith on this morning. I am encouraged by that. I thank God for Joseph knowing his role. He didn't get mad about it. He wasn't jealous about it. He was simply obedient to it. Ha, ah, God, help me be obedient to what you call me to do. Nothing less, nothing more. Only what you call me to, God. I love him for it. I love you all on this morning. That is this beautiful Sunday school lesson, a regal response to holy light. A regal response to holy light. And my response as should be your response to our response, our re reaction, our royal, our magnificent reaction to the holy light is to worship him. You worship him. You give him what your version of gold is. You give him your verse because that gold represents kingship. And we want to honor him as king of kings, huh? And your version of frankincense to show that we know who you are, God. We want his aroma, that incense of who he is, ah, yeah, God, to fill the atmosphere. Where? What atmosphere? I'm not at the church house. I don't need to be there, even though I love going to the physical building. But I, this, I realize wherever the presence of God is, ah, when that's where that aroma that I can send up. That frankincense up to him. You are God. You are Lord. You are king. There is no other. 
And then, and, and, and also in my, my, my giving, I can, I give him my time. I give him of my finances. I give him of my, my knowledge. I give it, Lord, take it all and use it for your glory. And then the gift that, that gift of myrrh, which represents the great sacrifice that he gave for us. And he paid the ultimate price for all the sin of the entire world world and i appreciate our god for that i really do i love him for it so i'm excited let me go over uh let me uh get off of here let you all go and tend to your sunday i'm gonna check in i believe my 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 family just landed and so um yeah y'all if i don't get to see or talk to you before the 25th i wish you a very merry blessed Christmas. I pray that your heart's desires are filled. I pray that God above all things keeps you healthy, keeps you strong. I rebuke the hand of the enemy against your life. I speak against coronavirus. I, 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 it is an entity. It is a thing and therefore it must bow. I say it to stay away that it will no longer touch any part of my family the, of, or of any of my friends and you are my friends. It won't touch any any of those that I love and that I hold dear to me in the name of Jesus. See, because I worship him, I know him for who he is. I know that he's Jehovah Rapha. I know he's my banner. I know he's my provider. I know that he is He is there with me at all times. I know him for who he is. He's my peace. Yeah, I know him. So I can come to him and say on not just my behalf, but on your behalf too. I pray that for you. I encourage you to walk in wisdom. Be wise in everything you do. Stay safe. Keep yourselves if you can. If you don't have to do it, don't do it in this season. If you don't have to, don't. But if you have to do it, be walk under the blood and the covering of God. Because we are all called to different things. Amen. I love you all so much with the love of God. I truly, truly do. Our God is so good. He is so awesome. And I would encourage you to take full advantage of this season, this, this holiday, this Christmas season, and let it fill you up. We re I stand against depression on the, I stand against it. We, no one will be sad or depressed. If you have life in your body, if you are, you have health and you, if you, you have no reason to be depressed. I, I stand against anxiety. I, I, I curse out any demonic spirit that would try to rise itself up. And the Bible gives me authority to pull down strongholds. And so by the power of God that is invested in me, see, I ain't talking about what's invested in you. I'm talking about the power of God invested in me. I can pull down strongholds, anything that would rise up against the power and the authority of God. Why? Because the greater one, yay God, huh, that is within me, yay God, that is within me, the greater one gives me that authority. Not me, but the greater one within me gives me that authority. I speak healing, complete and whole into your entire family. You should grab that. I would grab that. You, I, I do. I speak peace and, and, and provision. If you're in lacking, lack, we, we don't have lack. No, 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 no. We don't do lack. And I'm asking God that he would open up doors and then give you eyes of wisdom to notice the door. Glory to God. Notice the door when it comes to you. Open the door and walk in the door while you continue to seek God through the door. Hallelujah. God, I love you. I love you today. I love you so much. Ha, huh, yeah, God. I love you all so much. Yes, right. Frankie, receive it. Y'all better receive it, Sister Mary. I'm telling you, receive it. That, that, this, these are things that God gives to us. We live beneath our privileges as children of the most high God. We don't live beneath it. You are joint heir to the king of kings. You can have what he has. Huh? He's sitting in heavenly places. And, and, and I'm not looking at, at somebody. If diamonds is what you want, go for it. But you know the thing that I'm going for is the thing that's not perishable. I want the things that aren't perishable. I want to know him.
him for who he is. I, I want to I wanna be able to discern so I know how to walk right. Huh? I want to hear him. I want to know. See, angels ain't stopped speaking. We just can't hear. Ah, oh, my God. We are so clouded with the world and all of its stuff. That the angels are, the, are trying to talk to us. And we're deaf. Unclog our ears, holy God, that we might hear from you just like you. He Look how he spoke so much. Guess what? He isn't changed. The Bible says he's the same today. He's the same forever. He was the same then. That God then. He didn't change today. And if he was speaking then, guess what? He's speaking today. So the problem has to be in the ear. Ah, it must be the ear. Unclog our ears that we might hear from you. See, because see, sometimes we don't want to hear what he has to say. Because he might tell you to do something that may cost you something. Ah, my God. Ah, whoo, Jesus. Ah, whoo, it might cost you something. You got to come willing. See, that's a part of worship. You got to come willing to pour out all your best, your most precious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Huh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love him on today. I do, y'all. I love him. And I love you all. I do. I thank God for you. A regal response to holy light. Ha. Huh. Uh, you better say it, Sister Faye. Can you hear me now? That's it. Can you? Lord, I hear you. I hear him. I hear him. Hallelujah. I love the Lord so much. I appreciate him. He is good. The devil is busy and he mad, but that ain't new. We say it like it's new. My mother used to tell me in her life, yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil is doing what he do. The, the real question is, are you doing what you're supposed to do? Ah, are you going to be found guilty doing what you're supposed to do? Amen. I hear him too, Sister Frankie. Amen, Miss B. All to Jesus. All to Jesus. Every single, all, every cell of my body, I surrender it to him. Every part of me. Ooh, uh, amen. I want to walk the path that he set. That's it. Nothing less, Sister Mary, and nothing more. I just want to do what you said, God. Just what you, what did you say? That's what I want to do. And that's it. And that's it. Amen. I love you all. I do so much. Be blessed. Remain encouraged. Walk in faith. If uh, share this if you if you should desire with someone, someone may be encouraged to learn the the the, the actuality of this story. And this ain't my version. That's the Bible's version. It's not my version. This the, we grew up with a version. Three Kings of Orient are yeah, it's a cute song, but uh, it's not biblical. <laughs> it's not biblical. So, um, but I you know they just kind of merged it all in there. But it's that's no they they came to the Christ Child. The, the shepherds, they're the ones who found the, the, the Christ the, in the manger. So, um, anyways, Merry Christmas to you all. Um, I do. I wish you well this Christmas. Uh, I love you so much. Enjoy your families. Embrace them. Um, life is fragile. And um, I like to say, it doesn't matter how long you get to live it. Life is short. Yeah. We're only here for a season. It's, the Bible said our life is but a vapor. Ooh. A vapor. You can't even see that. So, I mean, a vapor. That's, he said, hey, like, it's like we like dandelions. Here today, gone tomorrow. What? You was bright and yellow the day you go out tomorrow. So There's a bunch of white fuzzy fuzzies. And then the wind blow. Phew, there they go. There they go. So, it's all right, though. That's all right. Um, I pray that you, the rest of this week, and the rest of your walk with Christ, that your royal regal response would be to worship him. All right. I got to go drink my tea, y'all. My little voices. I done cried enough this morning. Not, And these are happy tears. Y'all, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Um, you can log off if you want to. Let me testify real quick. So this week, 
um, the thieves came to break in my car. Lord, help them. Help people. Because they don't even know. They just listen to the enemy. And the enemy tells them to go do something. And then they just go do it. And sadly, they didn't understand. They had no idea that they had broken into the king of kings' daughter's car. They had no idea. They didn't know that the car... Uh, I mean, they broke my window. And the only thing they took was uh, my work bag. You know, and they took all my work. I was like, and I jokingly said, I hope they do it. I hope they do the work since they took it. And it's a, it's a, actually it was a nice bag. Uh, uh, Lady Gaston bought me that bag and she gave it, she gave me that bag as a gift and I, and I use it as she gave it as a work bag. It's a really, really nice work bag. And, and, and they took the work bag. So they took the gift that the woman of God gave me and they took all my work, broke, broke my window. But I thank God my husband, um, you know, just responded just quickly, went, took care of everything because, you know, got good insurance, took care of it, got the window fixed. And then he went and even got the windows tinted, you know, because, you know, uh, like just like Bishop taught this morning, uh, you know, uh, men are supposed to take care of things. And I appreciate that. And so. But the enemy thought that he could trip me up with this. First of all, it's stuff. It's things. It's replaceable. Uh, it's all replaced. Quickly, it was replaced. It's replaceable. Um, they didn't, they, they were so quick. And we actually saw who it was because thank God for cameras and videos and all that kind of stuff. You could see who it was. But my prayer immediately at the car was, Father, forgive them. You, why did you say that, Reverend Lorinda? Because I, I immediately thought about Christ hanging on the cross. And he had to ask God, the father, whose response could have been, wait, y'all messing with my boy. But Jesus had to say to his father, forgive them, father. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea that they just hung up their hope. They just hung up their access it to you. They didn't even know. And I love the fact that it didn't stop Christ from dying on the cross. So I was, I just asked God to, you know, forgive them and be merciful for them. And, you know, if there's, you know, let them get a lesson from them. Now it's not up to me how they learn the lesson. That's up to the father. I relinquish them to the father. And I can tell you this, and I testify this, um, lady Huggins, she's right here. She could, she could, she, she can testify to this two years ago. Um, uh, I was robbed right around Christmas. Matter of fact, I think it was around the same time. And someone had taken from me lots, lots of money in gifts from me. The Lord allowed me to know who it was. I actually tried to talk to the person. They refused. When I tell you two years later, since I've been here, that person through an attorney ran me down and asked me, could they please pay me back? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you release people and let God handle it, God will do some of the most bizarre, amazing things. Like you, it, and, and some people might be going, but she owed it to you. You don't get it. See, thieves don't think like that. See, the thief come in, he's, he come through the side gate. He don't come through the front. See, they not thinking like that. But see, what God wanted me to understand is my, see, I ain't caught up in the stuff. I get the stuff just because I'm a child of the king, but I'm not caught up in the stuff. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't ever want to be caught up in names and titles. And I got some, that's the thing. I have them, but I'm not caught up in them. I don't want to be caught up in, in roles and positions. I only want to do what God called. I don't care. I might think you may go, but you qualified to do this. But God called me to this. If, if he only said, all I want you to do is step right here and that's it. But I got legs and I can go this far. And God, But if he said, only step right here, I don't care how strong my legs are or I think they are. I'm only, I only want to do what he said. And so for me, he, he immediately gave me mercy for them. Why? Because he's extended so much mercy to me. Um, matter of fact, I think I, Lady Huggins said something. She posted something, which I love, um, about mercies. And, and, what, and, and what I love about it is it's not just mercies, right? It's new mercies every morning. 
It don't matter what I did with the mercies yesterday. I don't even know if I used it up or if I had some left over. It doesn't matter because today I got new mercies from the moment today became a reality to me. I had new mercies he gave me. Ah, I like that. New mercies, y'all. I got new mercies. So why would I withhold mercy? But they came against you. They don't know what they did. They had no idea that it was the daughter of the king's car. They didn't know. And just like the former thief did, they I don't know how God going to make this part. But I know repentance is due. And I, I was like, nah, it's okay. She begged me through the attorney. She really wants to pay you back. And I got to set the price for what she would pay. And I thank God I'm not a greedy, selfish, wrong person. That I don't think like that. I don't, I don't care. You can say, well, people walk over. No, they don't. You can't walk over the king. You, then that, then you think they walked over Jesus too. But they didn't. He knew who he was. And guess what? And as humble as I can say it, I know who I am. I know who I am in him. And I'm okay with that. I'm really okay with it. So the enemy thought that he could see what I realized and what I just love. My Part of my treasure is the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's my strength, y'all. You want me to flex my muscles? And I kind of got some. But my real muscle flexing is that joy. See, because the joy that I have don't come. It ain't, it ain't fabricated by stuff. You, it ain't come because of something happened. That's what happiness is. Happiness is based on what happened to me. And I like that too, because I got quite a bit of that too. I'm happy, but I'm full of joy. M matter of fact, my joy is full. My joy is full to the point that it's like overflow. And that's okay too, because that's the kind, of, that's what he'll give you. He'll overflow, he'll fill your cup until it overflows. Yeah, so... Yeah, the enemy thought that he was, he thought, he thought he did. And, and we was like, okay, yeah. Is it fun? No, nobody wants to have stuff taken and damaged. You don't want that. But, yeah, I'm healthy. We, we were able to fix it. Uh, and, you know, I, my thing is, I, I'm like, okay, God, I know what you did before. What you going to do now? Because God got this way. He loved He likes to impress me. I'm his little girl. He likes to impress me. So anyways, y'all, uh, thanks for listening to that testimony. Um, God is good. He is, his name is worthy of praise. I love y'all. Have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. I pray that you have a beautiful Sunday to uh, my Instagram friends. The same to you. Blessings on y'all. Share this if you choose to. Uh, Hopefully, uh, and for those who will see it later, um, let me not uh, leave this part out for any of uh, uh, anyone that may come across this. If you happen to be someone who uh, may feel in your heart that today is the day to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's a good thing. Well, I tell you, heaven goes just goes wild. The Bible says that they rejoice even on one soul. So if today is that day, let today be that day. Today is actually a really good day. It's like 12, 20, 20, 20. That's what today is. Like that's a cool day to make Jesus your choice. I love it. So if that's it, if that's if you feel that the Lord is, is tugging at your heart saying, today is the day. Come to me. I want to. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's like, I want to come in. I want to sup with you. I want to spend life with you. I want to do life with you. And he's so good. He'll do life with you. And he will pick you up when you fall. He will encourage you. He will teach you. I mean, he gives us this gift of the Holy Spirit to come along and walk along with us in this journey. You will not do it alone. And his version of perfect is the fact that you chose him. That's perfect. And he'll do the rest. He perfects us in a way that is not like we think. Mm -hmm. So, uh... I love y'all. If you if you if that's you, I, I thank God for you. Accept him. How you do that? Simply by believing he is who he says he is. We confess that. Accept him into your heart. Amen. Confess and believe. Believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
And the Bible says that that's salvation. Yeah. And then he takes care of the rest. He'll walk with you. And you feel free. To, you can always inbox me, um, you know, for questions or your prayer requests. I do pray. I believe in the power of prayer. And I ain't waiting to pray. I pray right now. So um, be blessed. And I'll talk to y'all later. Have a great Sunday. I love you all.